52 playing cards. Every single card is different in this deck. We also have a prediction pile, and before I begin, I'll tell you there's one card turned face up in this deck. Now I want you to note that any way you cut, you will cut to a different playing card throughout. So I want the participant to cut a small amount of cards and turn them face up. And you'll see, you've cut to a queen of hearts. This time I want you to cut a few more, maybe a bit deeper down. And this time you'll note that you cut to a ten of clubs. Every single time, it's a different card, and every single time is a different amount of cards. But before we proceed, I want to show you my prediction. Over here, we have 52 different blue cards. You'll notice to any magicians out there, there is no sneaky stuff going on. There's no sticky cards, there's no extra cards. There is just one face-up card. You'll see there's no other face-up cards. And there's two interesting things about this card. The Seven of Hearts not only is the only face-up card in the deck, but it's also the only card with a different back. It has a red back and the number 13 written on it. Now remember, you could have cut any amount of cards in any places, but you cut here. Let's count how many face-up cards there are. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Exactly thirteen cards, any more, any less, and it would have been a completely different outcome. But you also cut to this exact position in this deck. Again, any cards more, any card less, one card more, one card less, it would have been a different card card you cut to is exactly the matching seven of hearts. Let's learn how to do this trick. Firstly, you need to take a deck of cards that you can memorize the order in. This is known as a stack deck. So I'm using the very famous card stack called Mnemonica, which allows me to know the numerical position of every card in the deck. What I mean by that is, is that I know that this is in the second position, I know this is in the 15th position, I know this is the 8th position, a standard stack. If you want to, you can use a new deck order, but stacks are for another video. The card that I need to force is at the top of my stack, so in this instance I've put the 7 hearts here. Also for any magicians out there, I've just changed around the bottom card of the stack so they don't notice that it's this famous card stack. So the way the card force works is a classic of magic called the cut deeper force and it works by forcing whatever cards on top so let me show you how that how that happens let's say that they always have to cut a small pile of cards and then a bigger pile of cards so in this instance let's say they cut this many cards and turn them over you'll notice that seven of hearts is now here i'll leave it sticking up and now when you tell them to cut more cards meaning they cut past the face up cards so let's say they cut this many that seven of hearts will now become the new face down, first face down card of the deck. That's the classic cut deeper force, but how do we know how many cards there were? And how do we predict how many cards there were? Well, thanks to the stack of cards, I can do some very basic quick calculations. For example, when the cards are cut here, and, I, and they're turned over, I can see this is the nine of spades. This is the ninth card in the stack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If they were to cut a few less, immediately that's the three of clubs. I know there's four cards there. Okay. So they cut a few cards, and I can see, in this instance, the Queen of Hearts, which is the eleventh card. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So they cut a small pile of cards and turn them over. And now they cut more cards than they did before, so this time a bigger pile. And this time I'm gonna see the two of diamonds, which is the 19th card, okay? So 11 and 19. Take 11 from 19 gives you eight cards, all right? So they turn these over, and now I immediately know there are eight cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I know 
exactly how many cards are face up. And I know that the first face down card is the force card. So that's part one. We'll be carrying on with the tutorial in just a second. My name's Lloyd. And how much do you love the look of these playing cards? These are David Blaine split spades. And the coolest thing about them is that they're the first edition. You can't get these anymore, but you can win them from this video. The only thing you need to do is hit that subscribe button and drop a comment down below to let me know you've done that. A winner will be chosen by next week and announced in the video. And then these will be shipped to you wherever you are completely for free anywhere in the world. These exact cards that you see in this week's tutorial. So hit that notification bell to know when the announcement video goes live. And if you enjoy learning these exclusive magic tricks that I've created just for you that I post every single week, then consider becoming a subscriber where you can binge my back catalog and come back and learn something new all the time. Okay, let's carry on with the tutorial. Peace. Part two is not just revealing the force card, but revealing the predicted amount of face up cards. Here's how that works. I have what looks like a seemingly normal blue deck with one face-up card in it. But the secret is this. I have four normal cards on top, followed by this many, and there's 14 double back cards with numbers on them. I'll give you a better view. So these are cards that are red on one side and blue on the other. And every fifth card, so starting at number five, has two dots in the corner, a little black dot there and a little black dot there. And that's gonna allow me to count through the cards. So there are 14 of these cards, but they hide in the deck like this. Then I have a seven of hearts. I've also removed any duplicate seven of hearts from this deck and the rest of the cards are normal. So these go on top. I now know my magic number of cards is eight. So here's what happens. I push over four normal cards and drop them down. I can see a dot in the corner. So I know that's number five. I need to get to the number seven and drop those cards onto the table. So five, six, seven. Okay. Five, six, seven. I drop these down. And that means the next card has the number eight on it. So from here, I can just push over all the way until I get to the face up reveal. And I drop these cards on the table. I now show that this is my prediction and it's the only face up card in the deck. I then drop this on top of the number eight card here. What's nice is that you've got this another convincer of showing all these cards being different. So you've bypassed all those double backers. I now collect the cards on top of the deck and say there's one more interesting thing here. Not only is this the only face up card, and at this point I get a break underneath the top two cards. Okay, you can do that by pushing over and getting a break with your pinky or just doing a pinky break like this. I say not, not only is it the only face up card, it's the only card with a red back, but also on the back. And now I turn two cards over as one. Okay, so there's two cards. I just do a double lift turn both over as one and I can push this off now because that seven is secretly hidden there. I just can't show this face or back. So I turn these two cards over as one. Say it's the only card that has a number on the back. Also that number is eight. Now I've got this beautiful spread, which again convinces them that all the cards are normal. They believe this is a red eight, a red card with the number eight on the back and the seven hearts on the front, but this is actually the reality. But it doesn't matter, you've already shown the face of this. Now we come back here, and this seems more impossible than counting beforehand because to the audience, they don't know what a stack is, and they, there should be no way you know how many face-up cards there are. But you do, so you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. That's the first reveal, eight cards. That's pretty mind-blowing. The second thing then is to reveal that you could even like build it up, but you can reveal that the force card there is the match in seven hearts. The interesting thing to say here is that when you're performing, you can take more time and say, look, this is the first face down card. If you went and cut one more, two more, three, four, if you cut any deeper or any shallower, you'd be in all these positions, but you didn't, you cut exactly to the seven of hearts. To reset, you place that 
seven hearts back on top and you find the first card they cut to. In this case, it was the Queen of Hearts. And, you, and then you place this packet down and you reverse the counted cards, the eight cards, back onto the Queen. And all those are now reset. For this pile over here, you take these two cards, the top card of the seven hearts and the eight, you turn them both over, place the seven hearts away, and now you're going to find the first four cards. So in my case, it was these four. I place them on the table. I look through my numbers until I see the number 19. There it is. I cut that number 19. Everything above it to the bottom. So now it goes 19, 18, 17, 16, all the way through down to 5. There you go here. The 7 goes face up, or face down in this case. And now we're completely reset to do the trick one more time.